I'm not coming to this class again. <laughs> Pleasure without conscience. It, it can't be wrong if it feels so good. Well, that's wrong. <laughs> that's wrong. Knowledge without character. Sharp people with no scruples. Business without ethics. Don't we have that around? And then I like this science without humanity. But the best of all, Christianity without the what? Without the cross. We should, we should labor there. People call themselves Christians. People go to church that are, have the name Christian on them, but they're not Christian. Christ is not mentioned. The gospel is not preached. People are not pushed to take up your cross and to follow the Savior. They're diminishing. A lot of buildings, a lot of people inside, but they're lost. They have not come to understand the cross. The love of God that's upon... People, you know, this is the other thing that drives me crazy. People say, how do we get people to get more motivated? And I'm thinking, they're looking for some kind of motivational techniques. I'm saying, you see, when I hear that, I say, listen, no matter where the problem is, the answer is always where? At the cross. At the cross. I don't know about you, but that motivates me. But I can't be thinking about me anymore. I gotta be thinking about the God who saved me. I gotta be thinking about the people who are lost. But for that to happen, you need to embrace in a fresh way the sacrifice of Christ on that cross. And I think there's something to be said. Is the gospel being preached? Is the cross being elevated? Our churches are filled with crosses. Mm -hmm. I used to have one dangling from my neck, and there's nothing wrong with having a cross dangling from your neck. But if you were to ask me in that moment, what do you understand? Very little. Very little of the Savior. That he humbled himself and took on humanity. God. Walked this earth and then died brutally. And you're going to be thinking about you? And then, of course, the last one. Politics without what? Worship is the submission of all our nature to God. It is the quickening of the conscience by His holiness. Like that. It is the nourishing of the mind with His truth. It is the purifying of our imaginations with His beauty. The opening of our hearts to His life. And here it comes. The surrender of your will to His purposes. We've got to come there not my will, but what? That's what we ought to be longing for. That's what, by the way, can I tell you, when you get into that kind of a spirit, like I, I want what you want. Because I know when I pursue what you want, as a benefit, is your favor upon my life, in my family. This is a complete... Expansion, shall we say, of this verse. Oh, the bliss of the man who has self, who is so committed to himself to God. Notice that. So committed himself or woman to God that he entirely is God control. For such a man or a woman will be right with God. He will be right with self and will be right with men. And will enter that life which God has promised and which God alone can give. Can I just say this? When I go through a difficult day, and most of us know what a difficult day or week or month or year is. The only thing that sustains us in the midst of the difficulty is that one day, soon, I'm going home. It's not always trying to say, well, you've got to resolve this problem. No, God may want to use that problem. But one day you're going to be relieved. Or one day he's going to give you the peace in the midst of the problem. To exhibit the peace of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God. And then people will say, well, how do you keep it together when everyone else is just beside themselves? And you say, it is God and him alone. Well, 
Here we go. God's blessing is seen clearly when we when our passions are measured by his will and ways. Notice that. When passions are measured by his will and ways. Am I doing God's work right now? No matter what I'm doing, no matter where I am. My, my, one of my prayers, and Richard knows this, one of my prayers is to pray and pray regularly. Lord, this is your day. I'm sure I'm open to talking to anyone you would like to begin a conversation that might lead people to Christ. I was at the, I was at the VA having my hearing aids adjusted and I just began to bring up a conversation with this woman that was sitting there chit-chatting. We were well, having a friendly conversation, just being friendly. And I said, uh, she says, my husband is here and, and he's very, very sick. He's under a lot of medication. And she went out for a while and I was just listening. The husband came over and I introduced myself as a fellow Marine and we just began a conversation. And uh, he, he came up to me smiling. I was a little surprised. And I said, sir, why are you smiling? He says, well, I've seen you with no clothes on. I said, what? <laughs> I said, I, I'm sorry. I, I, my, I, my hearing aid needs to be adjusted. What, what did you say? I said, I've seen you with no clothes on. I said, well, not totally nude. I saw you in the pool at the v LA Fitness. You swim in the second lane, you always go in the hot tub first, 20 minutes. Then you swim in the second lane, uh, 30, 35 minutes. And I'm thinking, who is this? What, is he a bug on the wall somewhere? I mean, and, I, and then I remember thinking back, hot, hot tub. Yeah, there's a guy that's there, he's real quiet, gray hair, you know. And I thought, he says, oh, yes, I remember you. You know, yes. He said, I've been watching you. I said, I keep watching this. Oh, man. Knowing how many laps I swim, you know, what the color of my swimsuit is. I'm like, so I was over at, uh, I was over at Sam's Club. I'm just in Sam's Club doing shop shopping for my wife. And out of, out of, you know, this, this, his wife, who I must have impressed somehow, started screaming, you know, and everybody's turning around. I don't know who Fred is, but he better respond. And finally, I turned in her direction. Here comes her husband, Larry. And we need to pray for Larry. Larry comes over and gives me a little hug. She gives me a hug. It's so exciting to see you. <laughs> and I didn't say that. I just smiled. And then he whispered, what am I going to see in the hot tub? <laughs> I'm getting a little eerie feeling about this whole thing, man. I just said, nah, I, don't, I said, Larry, I, I don't know. <laughs> where, where am I going? Wow. There is a world desperately, desperately needing encouragement. Someone who would just lovingly have a conversation with him. By the way, we've talked about his medications. We've talked about how he's not doing very well. And I've talked to him and said, Larry, would you mind if I would just remember you in prayer? No, I would appreciate that. And I see him on occasion. This last week I've been super busy, so I haven't been at the pool. And sure enough, I went Monday and I... And sh there's Larry. Fran! <laughs> You're back! I began moving over in the hot tub. <laughs> we had a good conversation. I said, how are you feeling? So I'm feeling a little bit better. The love of Christ. Can, can I say this? You don't need to ask for meekness. God's going to help you. But you've got to be surrendered. You you got to die to self every day. You 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 got to. I don't know if it's a morning thing or an evening thing, but you got to come and say, Lord, you've got to crucify these things in my life that need to be eradicated. I, I think I told you this just before Aura comes up to lead us in prayer. That girl that I asked that she was not going to come back graduated from the University of Northwestern. No, no, it wasn't a praise of the Lord. It was like, are you serious? A thief and a liar and out of control. And we gave her a certificate. And now when she murders someone, she goes, what school did she go to? This is the girl who keyed the car. 
You see what I'm saying? Something is wrong somewhere. We, we've got to get to the point in our lives where we come up to someone and say, sweetheart, this is not acceptable. Wow. This is wrong. We've we got to be able to act crazy publicly. Someone is going to talk to you. Especially where? In the household of God. We don't permit that kind of craziness. And we want to say it lovingly to you. God is not glorified. We might have visitors here. They might have people who are interested in the gospel and you're acting what? Crazy. Well, uh, God's blessing is fully and faithfully demonstrated when we consistently yield our will to his control, both in public and private lives daily. God's presence is uniquely witnessed in those true followers of Christ who regularly conduct their lives according to Lives recognizing their faults. Now, how many of us do that? <laughs> Once. And they're what? Unawareness. By the way, you want to be careful what you long for. It better be the things of God. Let me say that again. You better be careful what you long for. What you, dare I say it this way? What you set your heart on. Well, I, I've got to have this. And if it isn't from God, it won't be a blood. It won't be a blessing. True modesty can only be witnessed in those who genuinely evict all human superiority from their thoughts, their words, or actions for Christ's sake. Do I hear an amen? Amen. Laura? Let us bow our heads in our submission and as we think about that there is the attitude of meekness. Let us think about asking our Heavenly Father to give us a heart of meekness, of gentleness, of love. Let us be clothed as we become the elect children of God, holy and beloved, with compassionate hearts, with kindness, with humility, with meekness and patience that we will be merciful even as our Heavenly mm. Father is mm. merciful, mm. that we may be perfect as He is perfect, and that we strive to be more Christ-like in our behavior. Mm. In Jesus' most precious and powerful name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Okay.